this is it. I am about to get my hands on the 2021 Yamaha Superjet. Yeah, it is a four stroke and uh, it's right there. I'm at a top secret warehouse in Georgia. They are slinging it off that trailer, putting it on another trailer, and then I'm gonna haul it home to my local lake and find out what it's like to ride a bigger, longer, more powerful, and probably better stand-up jet ski. That's why I need a forklift in my life, right there. Look at that thing, dude, it looks so cool. Yamaha is not paying me to make this video. In fact, they didn't give me a ski to make this video either. I borrowed it. I live 10 miles from the logistics warehouse for Yamaha for all their watercraft, and so I was able to scam myself into borrowing the new Superjet for three days. And honestly, I'm only gonna get to ride it for about an hour before I leave town and go film roadkill, but I got my hands on it before most other humans on the planet, and I'm gonna find out, should I have freaked out when they told me they discontinued the two-stroke and are coming out with a four-stroke? I don't know. I did get worried, I'll admit. When they told me, I ran right out and called 13 dealers on the East Coast before finding a 2021, before finding a 2020 Superjet, the last of the two-strokes, and I bought one. You might have even seen Cletus McFarlane pick it up from the dealership for me. So anyway, I got the 2020 home. I beat the snot out of it. So much better than my old 94. I love that ski. And now we're gonna find out, is the 2021 as good? Is it better? Is it heavier? Is it longer? What is it? And can we still have fun on it? There you have it, 353 pounds. That's what a 2020 two-stroke stand-up Yamaha Super Jetways. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't have any reference for that. I've never weighed one of these. I've just ridden it. And so... Okay, no surprises there. The 2020 is heavier than the 94. Now, you guys that are into this stuff obviously recognize that 94 is not stock. It's been modded. The drivetrain is totally stock, but the hull has been changed significantly. The old square nose handle pole and handlebars, those have all been changed, right? It's got a round nose hand pole, and it's got aftermarket aluminum bars, an aftermarket turning plate. Um, on the bottom of the ski, it has an aftermarket fiberglass ride plate. Some stuff has been done to it, but again, it's got a full tank of gas, it's ready to ride, and it weighs 346 pounds. So it's about eight pounds less than the 2020. Now, how much does the 2021 weigh? And how much do we care? That's the real question. Even if it is heavy, does it ride different? Does it turn different? Does it jump different? You know, do guys that are going to do flat water double backflips and, you know, 360s in the surf, are they going to want that ski? I don't know. Let's find out. All right, you want to know? Here's the answer. 441 pounds with a full tank of gas in it. It's actually not bad. I thought it was going to be heavier, to be honest. I really did. But Yamaha's done a bunch of stuff to take weight out of this ski. Obviously, the first thing you're going to notice, it has an aluminum handle pole. It's actually adjustable. There's three positions here. You can move this thing 50 millimeters up and down. The other thing they've done is the hood is lighter than the old one really not heavy at all, which is kind of nice, you know? So the extra weight I'm guessing is coming from the fact that the hull is about seven inches longer and it's about 3.3 inches wider than last year's SJ. And last year's SJ, that's the same SJ from like 2008 to 2020. Uh, 
yeah, the weight is coming from that three cylinder, four stroke TR1 engine, um, which I'm hoping rips. So. Got three generations of super jets right here. That's a 1994, 2020, and the new 2021. And I don't normally beach my skis, but I lined them up here to illustrate something. The 2021 is much taller and it is longer. But if you read the specs online and you really look at this thing, it's not as big as that other four stroke jet ski that's on the market that I won't name called the SXR. It's not as big as that. But how does it ride? How does it ride? All right, uh, Chris, let's just pace each other and make sure the Draggy's recording. Okay. And then we'll do a top speed run. All right. And what's the minimum speed you do on this? Like, I don't know. 25? Go about 15 and let's just see if it's, if it's like actually recording. Okay. Oh, there you go, baby. So this thing's way steadier than the other one. Really? I'm not even running and I can just sit here. That's nice. Awesome. That's impressive in and of itself. Alright, if you want to push the So this is this is good for about maybe 30 feet. Stupid wakeboard wakes. <laughs> All right, I think we're I gotta, gonna have to strap the phone to the ski, and I'm gonna have to not crash. Yeah, or get it wet. Yeah. Well, I think. <laughs> How hard can that be? Yeah. Before we go all the way back and zip tie my phone to the ski and risk getting it wet, you guys run the Nautique tapped out. I'll come from behind and pace you. So we'll already be going like, I think it goes 39. Then I'll hit it. And we'll see how fast we can get it to go without putting my phone on this thing. Do you got a zip lock bag? No. All right. You got zip ties. <laughs> <laughs> well, out of two zips ain't bad. Yeah, the phone will stay on. Whether it gets wet or not is entirely dependent on whether or not I go over the bars. Yeah. So Chris, go that way, run her wide open. I'll stick with you and then I'll hit it. Let me connect. Yep. so easy to ride fast. It's so smooth. How fast did it go? 53 was the top I saw. So here's the thing, right? It, uh, we were running over a little bit of wake and you could feel the pump unload and reload and it would accelerate and slow down, accelerate and slow down, which is what every jet boat does, right? I think in glass water with a little less fuel in it, it goes 55 at least. It's a rocket, dude. Um, okay, so this is like the hot rod channel. Normally all we care about is speed and my intention was to test all three skis and go around corners and buoys and drag my leg and all that cool stuff. Now, all I wanna do is strap the draggy to all the skis <laughs> and find out how fast they are. And then, I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll do another video about the handling. Right now, the handling at high speed is a beautiful thing. Another cool thing the Superjet has is right here, 
if you push the stop button three times, an LED is going to light up here on the fuel gauge. That's right, it's got a fuel gauge finally. And you can put this in what's called L mode. L mode reduces the amount of power the ski produces. You get about, I think they told me 85% of it. So if you're a new rider, or you're coming from a smaller, twitchier ski, like that 94, to this one, you can reduce the amount of power and performance this thing has and just get used to riding it. If you're like me, eventually you find out you want all the power and you, you skip L mode altogether and then you just go wide open and you find out the ski is really fast and you can only stay wide open for about two seconds before fear of going over the bars kicks in. Um, but then what you find out is this thing handles really well, like wide open. Just pin it and go. All right, so it one of the things work. I've noticed right away on this is the tops of the tray, like this is the gunnel of the boat basically. And if you're a beginning rider, you spend a lot of time here, you know, on your forearms, holding onto the handlebars. A lot of times when I'm going slow, this is how I get up, is I put the arms here and I pull myself up. They're not padded on the 2021. Really, that's my only gripe about this whole thing is pad this for guys like me. I'd be a lot more comfortable. That said, the tray is so wide and this, the boat is so stable that, watch this, I couldn't do this on my other ski. I can just get up without the ski running. I'm not a gymnast. I'm floating in the water on a stand-up, just sitting here. And um, that's a testament to how easy it is to ride this thing. I really think this is the super jet that gets more people into the sport because it is easy for us. And then you just fire it up, no pump in the gas because it's EFI, and you go. This is the 2020. This is my two-stroke, brap brap, nimble, fairly light, fun ski. Totally stock. So right now we're gonna find out how fast does this thing go. Notice I'm not on my knees on the tray. Just sitting here hanging out like I was on the 2021. And that's because this is a narrower ski. This thing, I think it's 3.2 inches narrower than the 2021. And so the tray is narrower. It's a little less stable. If I go to my knees, I'm gonna struggle a little bit to stay still. And why do you care about this? You really only care about this if you're new to this because it's more difficult to ride this ski in the beginning. So people can get frustrated when they're learning to ride a stand-up. The 2021, anybody could get on that thing and go have fun, I think. This takes a little more effort. See? <laughs> they should have like paid a professional to test this. <laughs> Instead they got me for free. Forty-three. Forty-three. The water was a little rough, and I'd say better water, less fuel. Somebody else could probably go forty-six on this thing. 
I didn't feel like I was ever going to go over the bars, but you definitely have to wedge your heels into the side of the tray to stabilize it. Once you do that, you can haul butt on this thing, but it's not nearly as forgiving as the 2021. Having said that, this thing is super fun to carve. Let's go get the 94. That's why I went in the water. It was hot out. It's not that I'm uncoordinated. 94 Yamaha Superjet, which we've talked about before. This is the shortest, narrowest, lightest stand-up we have here today. And uh, we have a long history together. I traded a 50cc pit bike and like 300 bucks for this thing probably a decade ago. My entire family has ridden it. My 73-year-old uh, dad has ridden it. Like Everybody rides this thing. I think I've put... Other than two stroke oil and fuel through it, I've maybe spent a hundred bucks on this thing in 10 years. It is reliable, it is fun, it is cheap to get into the sport on an old square nose super jet like this one. How fast is it? No idea. But this is the one that's most likely to throw me over the bars, not from speed, but just because the bottom of this hole is totally stock. And um, it's got an aftermarket fiberglass ride plate that I've never adjusted. and. To go wide open, pretty much you have to put all of your weight on the rear of the tray to stop it from porpoising. And uh, I'm not always successful at it, but I will attempt it today here for you people because I care. And science, science. Bluetooth helmet, I got it, it's on, don't worry. This one's also, this one's also less slippery than the 2020. Um, I think the first mod a 2020 needs is to have turf, turf done on it because you slip a lot. This one not so much. For a split second, uh, mostly running around 38, 39. Yeah, oh, yeah. You get your weight just perfect on the back of the ski. The pump stays hooked up in the water and it accelerates, but it's hard to do that in any kind of water other than dead flat. And that's an adjustment. You know, there's a ride plate on here that can be adjusted. The hole is totally stock. This ski is the one we have that's most likely to get modded. They make all kinds of things for this thing. That'll make it run with anything out there. And uh, it's fun. It doesn't carve as much as it slides around turns, but it's fun, it's inexpensive. I love riding it. So all morning long, I've been switching back between the 94, the 2020, and the 2021, and I've finally come to this conclusion. Yamaha did it right with the four stroke. I haven't lost any of the fun from my two-stroke jet skis. The three-cylinder four-banger rips. The throttle response is unbelievable. It's really smooth and powerful. The steering is really light. The way the hole moves in the water and turns feels very light. I know it's heavier on the scale, 
but it doesn't ride like that. I'm not getting fatigued riding this like I do on my 2020. And a, a large portion of that is the 2020, the stock hand pull spring is really, really soft. So you're holding the bars up the whole time. That makes that ski feel heavy when it rides. That's what I mean by the feeling. Physically, the 2020 weighs less than this, but because this thing has a lightweight aluminum hand pull, this doesn't fatigue you. And again, the motor is ridiculously good. So would I get rid of the 2020 for one of these? kind of thinking about it. I don't know. We either mod it to make it as good as this, or I get rid of it and trade it in on one of these. See you next time on Finnegan's Garage. The 94 stays. Like, it's a rad ski. You gotta keep it. Plus, it's my wife's favorite. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs>
Tell me you're 